Welcome to the first episode of Amino Acid Mondays, the show where I explain two amino acids a week in as quickly as possible, hopefully under five minutes. If you're lazy like me and don't want to learn them in like a day, even though you can, we're going to be learning two at a time and giving you some interesting slash important facts about them. So let's start with the first one, which is glycine. Now glycine is arguably the best place to start because it's the simplest amino acid. Um, this is its structure. I will draw it right now. And as you can see, that its R group is just the H. Now you only need to remember the R groups for amino acids to remember them. So just, th just look at the H and be like, that's what glycine is. Cool, so glycine is actually a chiral, as you can see, because there's two hydrogens. So there's not four different groups around the central carbon. It's just uh, three because it's two hydrogens there. Um, now, it's also it's a chiral and it's also very compact because of its H group. And because of its compactness, it's found in a lot of alpha helices. At least it's one of the major components in alpha helices. Now, it's also found in large quantities in structural proteins such as collagen and my favorite example, which is spidroin. Now, spidroin is the protein in spider silk that uh, is responsible for its flexibility and its kind of strength. It plays well in hydrophobic and hydrophilic environments. Um, and Glycine is also what's called amphoteric. Now, amphoteric means that it can behave both as an acid um, or a base at a given pH. Um, this is because it's got its amino group here, the basic group, and it's got its carboxylic acid group, which is the acidic group. And its H group is not contributing to anything to do with that. Okay, it's also a non-essential amino acid, meaning that it can be biosynthesized in the body without being intaken uh, in the diet. And this is usually from serine. Um, if you think of glycine as basically the default character in the character customization menu before you customize it, that's basically what it is. It's super boring, but it's really easy to remember. Let's move on to alanine, which is... I guess kind of like glycine's cousin, it's like you chose Nord and you change his hair. Um, alanine is basically, its R group is literally just a methyl group, um, so we can write the full structure here as being this. Pretty cool. So um, glycine is a non-polar amino acid, but alanine also is a non-polar amino acid, and because of that, it has a lot of the it has a lot of similar features to glycine. Um, it's I'm going to compare here like glycine. It's non-polar, non-essential, and it's also found in many structural uh, proteins. So they're quite similar in that regard. Um, I'll look at just its uh, other name. So if you see this, this is actually propanoic acid. Now for organic chemists, what you can do is call uh, alanine a different name. Um, if you treat this carbon as one, this one is two and this one is three, on the second carbon, you've got an amino group. So you can actually call alanine, if you wanna be pretentious, two amino propanoic acid, um, like this. But if you call it that, no one understand what you're saying. Okay, now next thing is the alanine world hypothesis. And um, this is really cool. Um, it's the idea that the first amino acid that was part of the genetic code was actually alanine. Now, why is this? Well, you can actually look at many different amino acids and see them um, as chemical derivatives of alanine, which is pretty cool. Um, I want to just talk about as well the, I, the L isomer form because this is the first chiral amino acid that we'll discuss, like all amino acids except glycine. Um, all amino acids are found in the L isomer form and not the D isomer form.